Hi, welcome back to Book Bus with John and Ping, a podcast where we talk about romance books, our current reads, and we also have the pleasure of sitting down with some of our favorite authors and chatting with them about their amazing books. Hello, welcome back to another episode. We did our podcast last week and it feels like forever. Like this mm-hmm. week by super slow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it went slow, but I feel like I did a lot. I read like I think three books, like two to three books. Mm-hmm. That's good. Because I've been on a like in a slump <laughs> where mm-hmm. like, I don't feel like I want to read, but I'm like, mm-hmm. that's not hard, like, time finding a book I want to read because I'm all catched up on my arcs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do I read? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same here. <laughs> but it's been good. We did, before we dive into today's topic, um, we did announce on our Instagram, in case you guys missed it, that we are going to announce the first author in our book box. Plus, we're going to reveal the cover um, mm-hmm. this Friday. Yes. I'm very nervous. Same here. Like, I <laughs> love, love the cover. And I love this book. So I'm really like, I really hope that everybody likes it. Yeah. Just because that's like... <laughs> <laughs> we envisioned when we were like talking about it mm-hmm. yep. before we even wanted to do a box we're like wouldn't it be cool for this book to have a cover like this mm-hmm. yeah and we decided to do our box and we're like well let's do the cover how we imagine it mm-hmm. i'm excited so make sure you're following us on instagram just because our box the pre-sale is gonna go it's gonna go live on monday um you know how Instagram have that favorite tab now? They can select that favorite tab and then the post will be one of the first posts that they will see at the top for the favorites. Yes. Also on Friday, we'll go ahead and add like a countdown on our story. That way you can like click on it and set a reminder for when the box goes live because our box is very limited. It's, I mean, mm-hmm. we don't very we don't have boxes but it is very limited we're not going to resell the book later on follow us on instagram so you can set that alert um like paying said click on the favorites that way you don't miss mm-hmm. out on our posts but other than that let's get to today's topic we are going to be talking about it's a duet the last book in that duet released two weeks ago on the 11th and it's the in Love and War by Monica James. That one was a little bit different than what I'm used to reading just because of the tropes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Did she put any trigger warnings on that? Yeah, she did. Check she totally trigger did. warnings <laughs> because the, it's the second book, it starts off with a, a really touchy scene to where it was... Just check the trigger warnings. I'm going to say that it is mm-hmm. a... Um, historical book if you like vikings i love vikings the show um then you'll definitely love this duet it is it does have i am gonna say it on here a um mfm scene Mm -hmm. um but it's just one scene i would say i don't categorize it as a love triangle but i don't know like maybe (laughs) yeah i i will consider it as a love triangle I kind of see it as an MFM too, but at the same time, like you said, it is just one scene. Hmm. So I, I don't know, but that uh, we can talk about more. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it's sort of like the trope. Um, it does end with just one couple. So it doesn't yeah. end where, you know, she's with both males. So mm-hmm. like I, like we said, it's just one scene. I'll give a little bit of background about this duet. So this takes place in England. And um, Scarth, he's the hero. And he is a Viking. His family was, um, I believe his dad was killed. And his sister and mother was captured. And so he is on a mission to go rescue his mom and his sister. Wow. Um, he was on his journey to 
go rescue them. He was captured by King Enred. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce all these names. But he was captured by that king. And that king is um, Princess Emmeline's dad. And so, and so this story, uh, I don't have to say this story is very brutal. Very brutal. This duet. I, you guys know that Monica gives us a lot, a lot of anxiety. We, whenever we pick up her books, we are anxiety is through the roof and I don't know like every time my heart beats so fast throughout these both of these duet I don't remember the age gap but it, it there is a quite an age gap in this duet and so she the princess she has a crush on Scar so she was betrothed to another prince of a different country so her dad wants the countries to work together so they could be stronger and so I seriously feel really bad for Princess Emmeline. Like her life, oh my gosh, it is not easy at all. Like at the beginning, I already feel really bad for her. And so obviously, so she was betrothed. And then years later, Scarth went on a mission to go save Princess Emmeline. And I will just leave it at that because I don't want to give too much away. But just know that their journey oh my gosh is not easy like i don't know how many times my it's like i don't know how many, many it's like so many obstacles gets in the way of like yeah love story mm-hmm. like it is insane i really don't know how monica james do it i have to say in the first book i was really really um i was quite mad at scars <laughs> because of the way how he treated her I was quite mad at him, but at the same time, I'm like, I do kind of get where he's coming from, but I was pissed that he would, will it be a spoiler if I say that he got married? <laughs> no, I mean, it's the first book. Yeah, right. It is the first book. Okay. Well, so I remember when uh, Monica first introduced this duet, she did say, well, there might be a threesome scene in this duet. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, I do not want a threesome scene. Like you guys know that me and Jan, we both do not like threesome scenes. <laughs> we tend to stay away from those books. But because it's one of our, Monica is one of our one-click authors. And so we still give this duet a try. And I really do love this duet. It's just that at times it was really like her books. You guys know that it's really dark. And so it gets really tough and hard at times, but it was still really good. There were some scenes and I'm not going to lie. Um, I, well, I'm not, I'm just going to say it. Like, I love Monica. I love her books. I, I love this duet. Mm-hmm. But there's certain scenes that I block out that for me never happened. Mm-hmm. one of them is the threesome the other one is <laughs> a certain scene in the beginning of book two that I, it's just those scenes never happens in my head yeah yeah just like you said, <laughs> it's like you said we're not into that sort of books to where it's like the threesomes and stuff like mm-hmm. I don't I don't like them but yeah. you said like I was so intrigued by this duet and I love the cover <laughs> I love Monica so it was mm-hmm. more of a I'm going to read it even though it kills me. Yeah. And I mean, mm-hmm. it was really good. I, lo- I loved the duet. But those mm-hmm. things, I-, I block them out. Like, to me, they never. Yeah. They never. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, that scene was, I seriously think that scene broke me. Pretty much like that scene in that kind of like the beginning of book one when um, she was pretty much pass around from that prince that who she was supposed to marry that prince and the king of that country Mm -hmm. she was pretty much the mistress and like I for any book for a heroine to go through that I don't know like it really breaks my heart and like it gets very touchy and so I that is a really huge trigger so it might some people might not want to even read it because of the trigger, but this duet is, I'm not sure all the triggers are there for this duet because it gets pretty brutal. 
there are very touchy subjects. Well, it's like you said, she goes through so much, but I do. Mm -hmm. I love her more than I loved um, the hero in this duet. <laughs> like, I love her because she was she went through so much, but she was like mm -hmm. the strongest of those two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And someone who really, really, really stay away from love triangles. I totally I'm not going to say hate because the hate is really strong word, <laughs> but I you really like. Yes, I really dislike love triangles book. There's, I don't know, there's just something about love triangle that makes me feel like they don't love each other enough. Like, okay, I get it. You love that person too. But at the same time, you're like, how? Like, I, I just don't, it does not click in my head. How can you love this person and that person at the same time? Like, I, I just don't get it. Like, it doesn't click in my head. So I dislike love triangle. Uh, Monica mentioned the MFM scene. So I was okay. That scene is going to happen no matter what. But I was not really prepared for the love triangle. And at times I was like, wait, so am I team Scar or am I team? I don't even know how to pronounce that guy's name. I like ULF? Like, how do you even pronounce it? <laughs> oof. Oof. <laughs> oof. Okay, well, something like that, I guess. <laughs> so at first I was kind of team yeah you know team oof. the other one <laughs> yeah the other one because I was mad of the decisions that Scarth did in book one and then I don't know like I have a really I love them but I just have to say I don't they're not my favorite couple from Monica yeah because of I guess you could say because of that love triangle. <laughs> You're like, it all determines, it all comes down to if it's their love triangle or not. No, but I agree with you. It's like, for me, I have a hard time reading books where they have, you know, like relationships with like threesomes or, mm -hmm. or stuff like that. Just because mm -hmm. me, if a, if a, a hero is possessive, if a hero mm -hmm. is, um jealous mm -hmm. why are you sharing with someone else yeah and yeah. I don't like when a hero shares so I'm just like but that's why I tune I, I cut <laughs> that scene out of my brain like that scene never <laughs> happened and I, we were ima you're imagining pain that never happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah <sighs> you know how in book two I didn't I was mad that she actually slept with the other guy so many times in book two. I was like, but see, and that's another thing <laughs> to where I wish I feel like she gave us more scenes with him than with the hero. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I felt like we didn't get to see them together together. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Were they really in love or was mm -hmm. it just like an obsession that she had wanting to be with him? Yeah, so it's like I felt that she didn't give us enough. Like, don't get me wrong, I did love the duet. I love Monica and the way she writes. Mm -hmm. but I felt like with this duet, we didn't really see their connection mm -hmm. to where we saw her more with the other one. Um, mm -hmm. I'm like, when like we barely saw the hero and the heroine together. Yeah, in book two, yes, especially yeah. because it, like they barely got together, and then. He have to go already. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, so is this like, okay, I get it. It's a Viking. It's historical. Maybe I guess it's not really meant to really focus on romance. Is but it you guys' romance though? <laughs> there was actually more action in book two, I have to say. And it's not really, I don't know. There were tons of twists and turns though. A lot of yeah. twists and turns that I did not see coming at all. And I'm like, oh my gosh, seriously? I did feel freaking bad for that guy when, this is probably huge spoiler, when I thought that that guy died. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, he really died? <laughs> and I, I got carried eye at that small part. And then I was like, wait, but the, that threesome didn't, scene didn't even happen. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, did Monica cut it out? And then 
I was like, oh, so I, he's actually not dead. <laughs> but oh my gosh, his mom. I hated his mom. Yeah. Oh, like I wanted to slap. I skipped like two scenes of hers because I was like, oh, I've had enough of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. So for, I have really, really, okay. I feel like this is kind of a, like a plot hole that was not really solved about his sister and that wolf guy. Did you think that their storyline was maybe, solved? Do you think maybe it was like, because she's going to write their book? I don't know. No more, no, no more, no <laughs> more. No more like threesomes or foursomes <laughs> or five sums like <laughs> i am five sums is there a word <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> i think to that point is when you consider it an rh <laughs> yeah i think so <laughs> i think even four yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah i felt like it was missing something but maybe mm-hmm. she left it open to a maybe they'll get mm-hmm. the story yeah, because it looks like the sister was, girl, I was, okay, it looks like this, okay, see, at the same time, like, Emmeline, or, yeah, it looks like she knows that the sister kind of have feelings for the oaf guy, mm-hmm. and then she still went and sleep with that guy. It gets hard talking about it, but this duet, if you love historical, then obviously you will love this duet, because it, at the same time, it's kind of like, you know how we both love game of thrones yeah. so at the same time at the same time like i i get game of thrones because mm-hmm. game of thrones it is kind of like very brutal like that too so i, I and also it. game of thrones was never like it was there was romance in it but i don't mm-hmm. think that was the main focus yeah yeah so it's kind of like the historical version part of like yeah. that. but I so if you sit- want more historical like pain said less romance focus then this duet is like you'll really 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 enjoy it mm-hmm, yeah like take off take out the romance part because i mm-hmm. like personally i i do wish we would have seen more of the hero and the heron like yeah. together because i don't mm-hmm. feel like we got enough mm-hmm. and i tr- i i don't i don't see how they're in love just because <laughs> of stuff they would do i'm just like i don't get it like <laughs> where is the love if you're sleeping with someone else and you're sharing and it's bad yeah you like i love game of thrones uh-huh. it yeah. is like if you're focused on you know the suspense the drama mm-hmm. the history mm-hmm. it's it's a really good book yeah now i want to rewatch mm-hmm. game of thrones <laughs> except for the last season i don't acknowledge that one <laughs> girl for this is totally off topic, but for Game of Thrones, my, I, I've always been, I love the Stark family, but out of all the Stark family, I've always been team Daenerys. Mm-hmm. And I wanted her to sit on that throne because I think out of all everyone, her journey to where she got to is the strongest out of everyone. She's the strongest, but she was on the route to becoming the crazy person. Yeah, I don't think she was capable of being on the throne, but I do think that Jon Snow, who everyone saw as the weakest, deserved mm-hmm. to sit on the throne because at the end he was mm-hmm. the strongest. Yeah. Well, Arya, but Arya didn't want none of that. Mm-hmm. I don't agree with the brand. Brand, the brother. Yeah. I don't. That was the biggest like what <laughs> f moment in history, like. <laughs> What is going on? That kid did nothing throughout the whole freaking series. <laughs> Other than run from like the White Walkers. Yeah, pretty much. Seriously. Like, oh, uh, I, I do not like that ending. I get so heated when I think about it. I'm like, how dare they do that? How dare they? And I, I know and you, you're going to be like, that is so gross. But I really loved John and Danny, like Khaleesi together. <laughs> I love no. them together. And I was like, oh, I'm stay together. I'm, I'm not a uh, John and Khaleesi together. No, I love them. Like I love them, but not together. Yes, they made a cute couple in the show. I'm like, no. no. 
But um, <laughs> I do wish, though, that John would have stayed with the dragons. Well, with the dragon, because only one was left. Well, he... What's his name? Drogon was sad. Drogon left. Now I want to rewatch whenever he meets the dragons. Girl, like, I still rewatch those scenes. Whenever the <laughs> dragon comes and rescue her, I've watched those scenes all the time. When I yeah. love the scene where they're fighting the White Walkers and they come with the dragon. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, but... Heck not. I, I don't really watch that scene because that scene is still sad at the end. Like, I get mad. I get heated thinking about it because of John. <laughs> John, don't insult my John. He did not get on the dragon. He was still fighting like a hero. And then guess what happened? One of the dragons died. And it wasn't because of him. <laughs> uh, if he would have gotten on the dragon. He would have died in the dragon. They, if he would have gotten on the dragon, they could have all flew away already, girl. <laughs> we would have all died. But, but we yeah. got a little sidetracked. But <laughs> no one really watched Game of Thrones except for like season. The last season never happened. So <laughs> I wish they would have finished Game of Thrones. I'm very excited for um, the House of Dragons one, though. Yeah. But they all died, though. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't really like the Did cast. they though? Did they though? What if they're hiding somewhere? It's uh, girl, this is like centuries before even Game of Thrones happened. I think they said 200 years before. Yeah. So they all died. They it's be hiding, girl. They could be yeah. hiding. They can't hide. They can't be Jon 200 Snow years hide. old. Did they hid Jon Snow? Not for 200 years. But well, how old was he? Like 20 something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, Totally off topic. <laughs> back to the book. Back to the duet. Backtracking a little bit. I know how I mentioned how, you know, the heron on this book, uh, I personally loved. Um, mm-hmm. But I think on book two that I tried to like erase from my brain, um, mm-hmm. I think we see a side of her that's very um, well powered. Like she's mm-hmm. so strong. Because of Mm -hmm. what happened to her, she just, she didn't shut down. Mm -hmm. She fought back. Mm -hmm. And I, I love, I love that side of that scene Mm -hmm. because we see her actually defend herself. Yeah. Like it hurt to Mm -hmm. like be reading that scene. I'm just like, yeah. Like I'm trying, I'm like (laughs) trying so hard not to scream at the book and like not psycho message Monica and be like, WTF Monica, but <laughs> I, I I did love how she didn't freeze, didn't like shut mm-hmm. down, didn't like it did she didn't let it destroy her. I think mm-hmm. it was stronger. Yeah. I think comparing book two to book one, book one, she was quite she's not as she was not weak, but she was not as strong. Mm-hmm. But after Scarth rescuing her, it looks like she got stronger. Mm-hmm. And in book two, she obviously she does not even need Scarth anymore. In she book can pretty- two, she has like her own backbone, like she yeah. has a backbone. Mm-hmm. And at times, I do feel like they don't really think before they do anything. Yeah, yeah. In book two, and then always they always end up being like, "Oh, great! Now we have to go through this again." Because of all those twists and turns. Like, I did not see all those twists and turns coming. So I was like, oh, this is actually a pretty good idea. But at the same time, obviously, Monica would throw in these t- twists that you'd be like, oh, crap. Like, mm-hmm. what the heck? And so, um, so Emmeline did seriously grew a backbone in book two. And and some people will, will say that she can sleep with whoever she wants. Like it's her body; she can do whatever she wants. Yeah, and so, yeah, I totally get that. I totally get that. But it's just that because I don't want them to be with any other people. That's it. <laughs> That's it. We are the ones that get possessive and <laughs> and jealous for the <laughs> hero. <laughs> like the heroes, I'm jealous, and we're jealous for the hero. Yeah, so. we are. I literally, I literally, I think that's what we do. 
that's how we <laughs> our feelings are to be honest <laughs> yes. um but i'm i feel like this is the first book that she writes this in though yeah because i don't Probably. think her other books were like that yeah they're but I have to say, all of Monica's books, that all the ones that I've read, deals with the R word. And I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get, I don't want, we don't want to get flagged by YouTube. So the R word appears in pretty much all of Monica's books. So if you haven't read any of her books and want to read it, do keep that in mind that those scenes happen. Yeah. And it, it gets scary. But everything will be okay. <laughs> I think like her books, like you said earlier, they give me anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, like they're so good. Like, mm-hmm. I will say, I think my favorite one of hers has to be, um, I forgot. It's the butterfly one. What's it called? Butterfly? Chase. No, chase. Chasing? chasing? Chasing the butterfly? Chasing the butterfly? Mm-hmm. Um, butterfly effect was a movie. Sorry. Um, I that one to to this day I still think about it and it's Mm -hmm. like what happens in the book and the way it ends I'm just Mm -hmm. like I need answers I need more like it was so perfect it I like Mm -hmm. I I screamed I like my anxiety was off the roof I was like what the fudge is going on (laughs) and but she writes in a way that is so phenomenal and she gets you Mm -hmm. so characters into these stories Mm -hmm. that all you want to do is keep reading even though like your anxiety is off the roof and you're you're, like eating your nails off and it's like but there it's the way she writes she gets you it feels like you're watching a movie yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like for for chasing the butterflies oh my gosh I seriously hope I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it will get turned into a movie. Like that will be a perfect, perfect movie. movie. Yeah. Like right when I finished it, I was like, oh my gosh, this book needs to be turned into a movie. Like the way it ends, the story within the story, like <laughs> what happens, like the little hints inside the book, mm-hmm. like it's perfection. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I never read a book that left me like, in a stage of shocked and like this mm-hmm. but so like obsessed with the yeah that world that she created yep i hope she'll write more of that world i need more. i thought she was gonna say i thought she said she was gonna write the the son's book, son's book. <laughs> but she haven't said anything so I, mean, I don't know it's been what two it, years i think so <laughs> but i have to say out of all monica's hero I still love Saint the most. Which one? Saint from um, All the Pretty Things. Oh, yes. As Saint is still my favorite hero from Monica. Oh, although that series, oh my gosh. Oh, that series, series, you would totally need a whole new episode just to talk about that series. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Monica's books. I I feel like I feel like when I first read her books, it looks like um a lot of people talk about her books. Mm-hmm. But now it looks like not as much. She her books doesn't get as much recognition. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they should. people should yeah, yeah, like people should read it because they are amazing. Like they if you love dark romance. Monica James is one of the best writer for dark romance. Even though your anxiety is off the roof, it is good. It is amazing. It's tough reading her books, but they are worth it. We always fight on who reads it first. And I always (laughs) think you read it first. (laughs) Yes, you always made me read it first. And I always have to go through it. (sighs) Because I'm just like, no, there's no way I'm going to start it first. Like, there's no way. Girl, this... She said... I. She just posted that her editor has, has four of her books now. So those books, you're reading it first. 
like I really want to know what's next like I'm curious but at the same time I feel like I need like a little break I really want her to write a happy romance not like yeah very like keep me on edge girl she said that these are even darker than her books I'm Mm -hmm. nervous but I'm excited Mm -hmm. but you're reading them first we shall see what if I'm busy or sick or something and you will not be busy you I'm gonna make sure you will not be (laughs) if you haven't checked out that duet please check it out it's really good um I, I I've seen on Twitter that a lot of people like threesome. So I mean, if you're in that, like, <laughs> it's true. Like I've seen it. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like I've seen a lot of people like they yeah. love it. They love our age. And I'm like, how do you guys like our age? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> Make me understand. But um, you guys will definitely like this duet. I do. Mm-hmm. If you love a strong heroine, mm-hmm. this duet is for you. Cause I feel like she's super, super strong. Um, if you want to be on the edge of your seat, if you want to spend, if you want historical romance, like it, this duet is for you. Plus the mm-hmm. colors are so, they're smoking hot. Yes. Oh my gosh. Like the first cover, when I first saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, this cover is perfection with an exclamation. Like I started watching, like I'm in season two of Vikings and then mm-hmm. I, that's, I, like I started it I think when I was in my semester of school my last semester of school so I never caught like caught up with it mm-hmm. um, so I'm like so behind but reading this duet like it's made me want to go back and like rewatch it and catch up with Vikings yeah mm-hmm. that show was really good I haven't watched it like if, <laughs> like if you love Game of Thrones like you love mm-hmm. like, and the last it. kingdom and the last kingdom like those are like super super good I need to catch up mm-hmm. I haven't had time to watch anything. Um, yeah. But. Have you seen the trailer for that The Northman? No. It seriously gave me the... Because, I don't know, but it kind of gave me the Viking vibes. Mm. So while I saw the trailer, I was like, good. It kind of reminds me of North of the Star. I need to look at that. I, just like The Witcher. Like, I've been wanting to watch The Witcher, and I haven't been able to watch it. Now that I'm caught up with my arcs, I might take, mm-hmm. like, more time to watch like shows that I've been like wanting to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I binge watched um, Casa de Papel, which is a show on Netflix last week. Um, mm-hmm. It felt so good to like start a show and finish it. I need to finish Vikings. I need to, I think I watched one episode of The Last Kingdom. Mm-hmm. I need to finish that. And then I'll probably watch The Witcher. Yeah. That duet made me want to go watch those shows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it makes me want to watch historical, but I'd rather read than watch. And so I don't really watch a lot of stuff. But sometimes as you guys can you see. Sometimes you need a little break. <laughs> so. Yeah, but if I need a break, I would just take a break and not do anything else. <laughs> Get my bed. Drink some coffee, watch some TV. <laughs> um, but yeah, but definitely check that out. You'll love the duet. I love the duet. And make sure mm-hmm. you follow Monica, Monica James on Instagram so you don't miss out on any of her releases. But other than that, just make sure you tune in again on Friday on our Instagram. We are releasing again the featuring on our yes. first box. Plus, we're revealing the cover. And then on Monday, the pre-order goes live. I am trying to finish up the website, like, before Friday. Fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> and I am so, like, nervous. I hope everybody likes the cover. Yeah. But, <sighs> but other than that, we hope you guys have an amazing week. Hope you guys are reading amazing books. Let us know if there's a certain more, like, vikings books out there because i would i would want to read them yeah there's not a lot of them i haven't read a lot so if you know of any just let us know and we'll see you guys next week bye bye